Hello, everybody. Welcome to this session on Metaverse. It's been a pleasure to be here today in Barcelona in Mobile World Congress. This session today is a panel about why uh, Catalonia is becoming a really hot spot in game development. And <coughs> I'm here to present you the, the panel, and I'm the moderator today. My name is David Fernandez. I'm CEO at Sons of Games, a mobile game developer and publisher based in Saudi Arabia. Been working in games for almost 15 years, starting in 2004 and involved with a lot of you know, mobile companies here, including King or uh, Digital Chocolate. I have with me a host of wonderful uh, people here from, from the city. Uh, let me introduce them. So first we, have, first we have Gina Tost, which is Marketing and Operations Director at Europe in RGG. Welcome. Thank you. We have Oriol Canudas, Vice President, Head of New Games at King, an Activision Blizzard company. Welcome. Thank you. We have as well Yolanda Sanchez, Human Resources Human Resources Business Partner, again, Loft. Welcome. Hello. And finally, we have Xavier Carrillo, Chief Executive Officer at Digital Legends, as well as President in the VCAT, one of the major organizers for this event. Thank you. So before we start, let me give you a few data about the gaming ecosystem in Catalonia and Barcelona. First of all, this is an industry that is generating a lot of uh, jobs and opportunities for people in the, in the region. So we are employing more than 5,500 people here in the whole region. Secondly, uh, we have more than 150 companies established that are doing game development in, in Catalonia. And that represents more than 30% of the total game companies in Spain. Also, if we consider the employment uh, in the industry, Catalonia is employing more than 50% of the actual labor in the gaming industry in the country. However, if we focus on Dedicat, the company, oh, sorry, the association that we have here, we are generating value which is above two billion US dollars in the international markets, and we reach more than a billion players all around the world. And that's, you know, with the support of the games developed here, uh, name, a few of them could be, you know, uh, Bubble Witch 3 from King. We have a few games as well, like, uh, um, well, we'll cover later some of the games. We have Asphalt from Game Love, but I'm not going to show all of the games that we have here. Um, Maybe a, a first question will be for, for Xavi. Tell us a, li a, little bit, a little bit more about Dedicat. What's the role, what's the purpose of the, co the, or the organization, <clears throat> and how you have been supporting game development in the region? Thank you, David. Um, so you mentioned that we're talking today about a strong ecosystem that we have here in, in Barcelona and Catalonia. And um, Dedicat is basically the vehicle uh, for that ecosystem to connect with each other and as well to connect with the different administrations. So a strong ecosystem uh, is key to compete worldwide, is key for all the companies that all the companies here might have. Um, we might compete with some games worldwide, but you know, uh, gathering together and working together, uh, making strong the ecosystem, makes strong all the companies here. And at the same time, we have uh, uh, very good uh, communications with the different institutions, uh, both at you know Barcelona level, uh, um, Catalonian uh, government level, <coughs> Spain, or even Europe. So that's very important, and that's where Devicat is basically where everything happens in the ecosystem. Thanks so much, Xavi. Maybe we get uh, more into into your own company. Tell us a little bit more about uh, uh, Digital Legends. What do you do, and how you are developing the ecosystem here. Yeah, so Digital Legends, we're turning uh, 20 years uh, this year, and we've been among the, f the few first uh, company in, in Barcelona. Game Love was there as well, uh, Ubisoft, Novorama. And um, so I would say we've been uh, pioneering being here. Um, and, you know, when we started, it was very complicated. It was not an industry, it was just individual uh, initiatives. Um, at the same time, the gov local government was starting uh, with the vision on, on, ec on startup ecosystem. So we were part of that. And we decided to say, OK, let's also work so that video game becomes an important industry here. And let's, talk, uh, let's start talking to uh, the different institutions. Let's evangelizing about video game. Video game was very unknown 20 years ago. <coughs> and we spent a lot of time explaining 
again and again why it's video game, why is important business, why is important. So all those years of work, uh, then we founded, uh, we founded uh, the Developer Association uh, as well to have a sort of legal entity and a point where everybody, if they have a question, they can come and talk, discuss, and then uh, we've been working a lot of initiatives. So, um, you know, Barcelona has, I would say, they had those seed companies, so that was very good. Then very strong, you know, education. So we have really amazing universities here. Uh, we have um, a tradition of design, uh, animation, and uh, all areas of design. Uh, then it's, uh, it's a small and big city, so that's very good for creativity and very well connected. And on top of that, we had a very strong administration that believed in, in. So all those elements together, we've been nurturing that during years. And I think, you know, then you've seen a lot of companies. You were at King before. We remember very well before King was ever coming to Barcelona, we had one of the founders of, of the Barcelona City visiting on, on, on Mobile World Congress, on Game Lab events, and say, okay, wow, you have an amazing uh, um, community here, and, and it's, 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 it sounds like a great place. I would say that's well that Mobile World Congress has an import, played an important role because we had a lot of sea level from very big companies visiting <coughs> and discovering the city and connecting with the local companies. So all those, this mixed, I think worked, uh, and, and the result today of that strong ecosystem has been all the work done by all those uh, different uh, entities during all these years. Thanks, Xavi. Uh, talking about pioneers, Game Loft, one of the you know, early establishers here in, in Barcelona. Tell us a little bit more, Yolanda, about what you do here and <coughs> how have been your experience in the company since establishment. Uh, hello, yes, um, as uh, Xavi was commenting, uh, we uh, opened our studio here 20 years ago, 21 years ago. Uh, so uh, we were one of the pioneers together with uh, Digital Legends and, and other companies that he has mentioned. It was really difficult uh, in that moment to find the appropriate profiles that we needed for the, for the industry because it was an unknown uh, ecosystem in, in Barcelona. But, Thanks to uh, the DEPICAT, to the association, to, to the ecosystem that we have been building for so long, uh, now we are just a family. And, and we, we have, uh, fortunately, that sense of, of belonging to, to something more important and uh, more uh, visual than only one company itself, but uh, a huge uh, uh, bunch of companies and, and a, a huge ecosystem. Thanks a lot, Yolanda. Now moving to Oriol and King. You established here, I think, eight years ago. So how has been your experience in, in, in Barcelona? So th thanks, David. So uh, as you mentioned, I think it is important to remark that an ecosystem is something that has to be built organically and over time. Then there's been a journey. And then King also just founded or set up this studio in Barcelona in 2012. That was the moment where Candy was just launching on, on, on Facebook, not yet on mobile. And then those new technologies, an internal engine, and then when the company started, started relying on local talent. that also many people converted to the mobile industry. So I'm, I'm an example of, you know, of, of these cases. Of in many fields, many people, because it was kind of a new, it's still for the city and this, and, uh, and this, this, new, um, this new business, many people converted, and companies like King, for example, will help it, like to, to give the nice onboarding, the nice knowledge for you know, to to both uh, employ local people, convert people from in the different industries, and then as the business grew, start uh, importing talent from from worldwide, from across the world. Then King has been a player that started small uh, eight years ago, but the city has proven the, to be able to provide what it takes for a big company in our case to settle in, you know, and grow. So now today we are more than 500 people. This is a clear example of you know, how much the city, the ecosystem can provide for a company needs to be at the top of, this, uh, of the charts. And, um, and I think Xavi mentioned all of this. I think why, why the city, it is, why King is, is being building in, in, in the city is because all this administration has the right attitude, is always supportive, both to the small companies and to the big, big companies. All these events that uh, are happening put the city into the map. So people, I mean, everyone in the industry knows what Barcelona uh, is capable of doing and what it's doing. So it is really easy for big companies 
to sell the city and to import talent because you know, the cost of moving, the cost of you know, migrating and going to a city like Barcelona, uh, it's, uh, it's way smaller than to other places. And then together with this, I think associations like, like um, Debbie Cat for me are at, are at helping on, uh, and creating these synergies that you know, we all have that are gonna make the ecosystem stronger. So King has been an example that has been a, has been a participant, a, 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 an important player into the ecosystem that has fed, has fed other companies and now we all together have been growing the ecosystem and we are circulating talent and, and working together. Thanks a lot, Oriol. So moving now to Gina. Hi, Gigi. You are maybe the, the new entrant here, been established for three, four years now. So what has been your experience working here in the city and what, what are you doing in the city? In a healthy environment, a tree grows with other trees and it's called a forest. And they do not compete with, for resources, but they compete to have the better tree, uh, the better forest. That's what we are trying to do here. When um, IDG wanted to open a new European headquarters in, in Europe, in any city in Europe, they thought about Barcelona because other companies like Ubisoft, like Gameloft, Digital Legends, King, Social Point were already here. So they knew it was a healthy environment to live with a lot of talent, with other companies. So they knew it was the right place to be. Um, we are the new players. Um, IDG is a very big company with more than 2,000 employees worldwide, 21 offices um, along all the cities in the world, but only one in Europe, and it's in Barcelona. Our um, goal here is um, to know more about the Western market. IDG is a Singapore-based company, so it's very Asian-focused, but he has also a site on the Western market. So they want to gather all the information and um, use all the talent that we have here uh, to grow big and um, provide new games and new experience to everybody. Thanks a lot, Gina. We have covered a few uh, topics from light perspective. So maybe one of the things I'm interested to hear from the panel is around talent. I think we all mentioned that you know, the talent is already available in the city, that you have been working with uh, you know, since the very beginning on increasing that talent, uh, working with universities, with uh, uh, companies that can support these degrees, these careers in games. So maybe uh, uh, in this case, Yolanda, you, can you tell us more about your experience working with universities and local institutions on education and creating talent? Of course. Um, basically, what we are trying to do is to work together with them because, for example, some of our employees are already teaching in those universities uh, because it's uh, important that uh, we can provide to the, to the students uh, a real um, a real environment about uh, what's uh, going on in, in the gaming industry. I mean, theory is always good, but uh, in, in some, um, in, in a way, it's important to explain them what's the reality of the gaming industry nowadays. And, and we are trying to, um, to help in that with uh, employees teaching and universities. Uh, we are also uh, signing agreements with, um, uh, with universities to bring uh, students to our studio to uh, continue growing and uh, learning while studying, um, trying to, um, to get uh, more profiles and even show them uh, what's the importance and the, the overall uh, challenge that, uh, that our industry can be for them in the future. So maybe, Xavi, uh, thinking both from you know, the Digital Legends perspective as well as Dedicard here, how have you been supporting these conversations with local governments, you know, regional governments, national governments, universities to define these career paths, define these opportunities? As uh, you know, most of the people working in the industry for long have been, in a way, uh, self-teaching themselves. They have no proper degrees. And uh, how have you collaborated with these institutions? Yes, for, for many years we had, to, we had very good tech universities, art universities, nothing <clears throat> specialized in video game. And so we had to train people uh, in our company. So I think being here 20 years, we've trained a lot of, of people from a lot of talent from 
other uh, companies in the ecosystem. And then we realize again that as an association, you can <coughs> identify problems for all the companies and then again talk to the right people. So we work with the government, we push very hard as an association to um, have them um, validating the first uh, video game degrees. So that, that was a push that was between, between you know, the ecosystem and the government, and so they started. Uh, and then uh, with, now we are uh, working um, as well with some entities that are um, um, uh, responsible for universities from a government perspective. And we have direct dialogue with many universities, not only as a company, but as an association. So what we're seeing right now is we had the first generation of uh, talent that had a specific video games uh, education. And I would mm -hmm. say the talent, the potential of the talent is amazing. Of course, we need to work with them to improve that because you know, it, they're still very young um, um, education. Uh, they, they've been a few years there. So we're in, in contact with, with the universities and telling them, okay, that's what we really need. That was the ecosystem needs. So, and that we're seeing, I mean, your students are good at that, but maybe you should insist in that area. So that's one of the things. <clears throat> the other thing is we're also working on, on professional, uh, you know, different type of education, not necessary universities because uh, I think the industry could be nurtured as well by other types of, of, of degrees. So that's a little bit how we work. And of course, um, having this ecosystem growing, having a lot of international com uh, companies coming means that you have a lot of international talent coming as well. This international common uh, brings a lot of knowledge and this knowledge then you know, uh, is transferred to the <coughs> ecosystem. So to, to existing people as well as to younger generations. So that's, makes the ecosystem even, even richer. Um, and finally, I think we're also trying, uh, uh, working with the university, they need to be more international. They need to be connected. Uh, that's very important, to connect bridge between universities so that they can export talent and import talent, export teacher and import teacher. I think that's, that's something we're working with them. Uh, they're not quite yet there, but we hope that uh, uh, another example is, for example, I mean, English is the language of the industry. And now you see some degrees, they are full in English. That's a result of the industry telling, look, you know, you're a student, we have to take them on board, and then we have to teach them English, because if not, they won't be able to work. So, you know, that's, that's how I would say that ecosystem is, is working, a lot of dialogue, <coughs> and it's improving. Thanks a lot, Xavi. Uh, you touch upon international talent as well, which is uh, really a, an opportunity that we can create in the city, uh, bringing people from outside of Spain, outside of Catalonia, to create this uh, knowledge base that we need to develop the industry. And I think here, maybe King has the experience on bringing a lot of international talent. What do you think the city can offer to these people coming in? Yeah, so, so first off, when it comes to this visit, it's about talent, so point number one. And, uh, and to create strong teams, you have to have this mix of, you know, of, of local, younger, and then these, these, these top individuals. And just echoing uh, what Xavi has mentioned, I think the city is now offering tailored uh, programs. And, it's, and I, I, I do like and appreciate a lot that the universities are really eager to understand and to learn from what is needed in the industry to tailor their programs to have you know, even better prepared professionals. That's really uh, an asset. Then when it comes to the top talent that you are being uh, pushing hard to bring them here. So, so first off is the city is really easy to sell. <laughs> this, is, this is really important. So the city is, is an open city, city accessible, well-placed. The quality of life is, um, is really like a selling point. And over time, when people have to make the hard call of you know, moving from another country, the ecosystem is really important too. So if, if this project fails for some reason, they know that today there's an alternative. Right? So all this organic ecosystem is also really important that we consolidate. So the cost of you know, moving, changing is lower and lower. Then I think I have many examples, but people have come from all over the world. And I think it's, it's also relevant that most of the people that came here initially for a short period of time, either have stayed here or have established in the city. 
and they you know they become ambassadors of you know of, of the city. Then you know I think it's by bringing waves of talent, they also have like a call of effect for their own you know areas a network that brings new people because again to make like an, an important call like, as such of moving to a new city having some preference understanding you know what the ecosystem looks like or knowing more about the city uh, is, is a fact something that we have done for example kind of a, to, to sell the cities people that are that were hesitant we invite them to come here and then to spend like, some days here then they they, they meet they, they meet us they, they they see they see the city the office and then make the call I, I can say that you know most of them have really been convinced after visiting us. So. Thanks, Julio. Things you mentioned about the snowball effect here, trying to amplify, you know, what are the things that we are doing by bringing international talent. I mean, we are today in Mobile World Congress, so I think we are talking about visibility about the city, visibility about the, of the industry. So, Gina, how do you think events like this contribute to expand that ecosystem? I think that, as my other colleagues um, said before, this is amazing. Just being here in this show today, it's amazing. Because it's showing the world that the, the, the ecosystem and the, and the companies and the work never stops. We keep working. We are maybe working differently. Maybe we are working from home. Maybe we are working from people who is in another country. But thanks to technology, we can still work, and, and, and maybe this, the, the same pandemic like um, 10 years ago, five years ago, it, maybe our companies wouldn't be viable because they weren't the tools. So to have good uh, professionals trained to understand the challenges and, and the technology is super important. And this um, Mobile World Congress is an example of that. Thanks a lot, Gina. Shabi, maybe from, from the Vicat perspective, uh, as uh, Gina mentioned, I mean, this opportunity is amazing to, you know, actually uh, provide uh, visibility to the ecosystem. How the Vicat in this case has been working with local institutions, local governments, national governments, regional governments to, you know, create events like Game Laugh, like, you know, Barcelona Games Week, Mobile World Congress. How, how is the role of the association to support these opportunities? Again, uh, as I mean, at Devicat, we try to connect the dots. So um, we're here today. Uh, we've been very supportive of Game Lab. Uh, we're supporting of other trade show in Barcelona. We are everywhere we go uh, in any international events. We always mention, uh, you know, Barcelona and how good the ecosystem is. So this is like I would say a way to reach the word of what he's been doing uh, here and at as, as the same time to bring you know to the ecosystem what's happening uh, uh, around the world so it's it's really important it has been key as i mentioned before this event i think is the one that drives more sea level people <coughs> executive people in the city so it's been amazing for us for years to have like you know big hardware manufacturer big uh, industries uh, sea level coming to your office because it's just a few blocks from here and because they are in the city for work. So that's very valuable. That's why I think it's very important for all the ecosystem, not only the video game ecosystem, but all uh, Barcelona, Catalonia, and Spain ecosystem to, you know, uh, uh, understand how important those type of events are uh, for a very large ecosystem. Uh, that's great, Xavi. I think we discussed about talent, about events, about uh, the number of companies established here. Uh, the actual city, it's really attractive as well. Uh, do you think, uh, Gina, that there are more reasons to uh, create our, this opportunity in Barcelona? Uh, I mentioned before that you know, Barcelona is currently one of the you know, leading gaming hubs in Europe, so it can compete with cities like London, like Berlin, like Helsinki. But, uh, is there any other kind of uh, recipe for success here? This is a tricky question because mm. we have to make sure that we are not the poor people from Europe with low salaries. You like, you know, we are like the cheap office in Europe. We have to make sure that our talent is well paid, is equally paid, um, because they have the talent, they have the knowledge. Um, 
when a, on a big company is coming here, it's a good news, but we have to make sure what kind of talent they are hiring. Um, they have to, to come here for the good reason, and that's why we have good politicians that are always trying to um, <laughs> making us uh, um, be in a good position, and, and, and I don't want to be like the, like the storage for, for this kind of uh, talent. But, as you said, Barcelona has an amazing weather, amazing food, amazing views, the, the transportation is great, so you don't need to be living in the city center, you can live on, on the surroundings, or even in sieges or in big, if you want that because transportation is great. Um, but we have to make sure that we are not the cheap office in, in, in Europe because we are competing against these offices, uh, these other cities like Paris, London, as you mentioned, where salaries are much higher. Thanks so much. And I think Xavi would like to comment something on this as well. Yes, uh, I agree with, with Gina, and I think we, we passed that. I mean, uh, I mean, now we got you know, international companies, international salary range. So, so, and and again, we've moved to compete with with quality. Uh, what Uriol, Uriol was saying before is that this is a talent industry. So that means that talent is so important that basically talent picks the company they want to work with, and they pick the place, the location in the world they want to work with. So. That's why Barcelona is so important, and that's why Barcelona has a lot to offer, because it's going to offer you know, quality work, challenge projects. And so companies here, I mean, we've, we've, I mean, we've been mobile for many years, and we've always been seeing you know, uh, you know, companies from Barcelona in all the events showcasing things. So uh, uh, you know, we've, we've done several Apple keynotes. We're always seeing the Game Love guys in the labs. It's, it's amazing. And then, you know, uh, in, 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 um, so we got uh, uh, companies, you know, Candy Crush is more white. So you, you got really have that. So people that comes here, they come because of there is, there is challenge, quality of what, you know, it's, 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 that's very important. It's you come to Barcelona because you want to work on a great company, on a great project, on a great environment. So that combination is, is what we can offer. And then again, it's, it's, it's not a too big city, it's not a too small city, it's, it's, very, it's a very good size. And what we're selling now is, is we're seeing also a lot of company landing now <coughs> and just moving you know, to Cites, for example. We have companies in Girona. So you, you can get probably one of the best quality of life here that in, in the rest of the industry and, and in terms of, of cost of living and everything. So it's a combination of that. And it's because people are choosing and talent is choosing where they're gonna work and in which company, in which project that Barcelona can have a lot to offer. And when they, and when they finish uh, the project that they are working on and they are tired of working in, in a specific company, they can move to another one very easily because we are all here and it's full of interesting projects. To, to support what, uh, what Xavi was mentioning now, I, I think that, uh, for example, I, I can provide some experience with that because, you know, uh, Gameloft is a big company, a big player in this industry. We have more than 3,500 uh, 3, uh, employees around the world, 18 different locations, and one of the best um, games right now at Gameloft is developed uh, in Barcelona. I'm talking about Asphalt 9, and even before Asphalt 9, Asphalt 8. So, we are basically, um, well, we, we are providing a lot of quality to this industry. So I think this is important uh, to remark that we are not just uh, one big hub or one big location or great location in terms of uh, cost of life, weather, etc. We are just uh, providing very good quality to develop in-house uh, projects. Thanks, Yolanda. I think, uh, Xavi, you mentioned about, you know, talent picking the projects, picking the city, picking the companies. And I, I would like to understand from Kim's perspective, uh, what was the role of the, of the studio here? I mean, you are leading new games, definitely this is an exciting opportunity. So what, what kind of um, projects you are offering to make people come in here? Just fo following up of you know, what they're saying, so by no means Barcelona is a second tier city. I mean, 
at least on our experience. Uh, King, when it, when, it, when it grew, it opened, up, it opened many studios, and Barcelona has not only established and grown a lot, but also taken a uh, really important project. So I'm head of new games at King, and uh, they're trying to, be, the ambition of the, because of the size of the company, the ambition is high. And uh, we are here creating new IPs that uh, are trying to disrupt the market with, as I said before, a combination of you know, top talent that may have come from uh, any part of the world, but together with teams that rely on local expertise and local talent that uh, provide to be uh, really good. So it's teams in Barcelona deliver, teams in Barcelona uh, come with results. And I do think it's because making a game is a combination of multiple things. Like it's, you know, they say that it's the blend of you know, science and, and art. And maybe locals, we do have this uh, really ingrained you know, in our behaviors. And people know how to connect dots and you know, are really uh, efficient and to, to the point. And this is why companies not have just subsidized of the company in Barcelona, but yet have the important creation hubs. Then I can tell that, at least in our case at King, here we are creating we are both working on, on, on our live games and you know, working for Candy Crush and other big franchises, but also creating the top titles that hopefully at some point are going to be in the market and, uh, and disrupt it. So I'm saying top, uh, top tier <laughs> uh, type of work, top quality type of work. That's great, Oreo. Hopefully we can hear from you when you have a new title. You can, you can show to us. and definitely quite excited about the things that you know, all of you are, are building here. Uh, Maybe on, on this opportunity about Barcelona, we discuss about gaming industry, but there are other related tech industries happening in the region as well. So we have e-commerce, we have AI, big data, advertising products all around the city. And I think we, we touch upon uh, that the talent we require is quite broad, quite diverse, not just to create games, but also operate games. How maybe in this case, Xavi, you see the synergies with other industries in, in Catalonia as a, a beneficial point for game development here? Yeah, that, that's what I will call the broader ecosystem. So the, the, if, if you extend to the uh, um, old startup ecosystem and the e-commerce, of course, there is a lot of uh, uh, additional uh, talent that we can uh, get from them. As well, it's going to be competing against them. It's always what you have with talent. But definitely, uh, again, uh, ecosystem, strong ecosystem is, is good. So if, if, if the startup ecosystem here is stronger, it's, it's good for video game. It's a video game ecosystem is strong. It's good for them as well. Because, you know, I think uh, we excel. I mean, video game is, is, is excelling in a lot of, of tech that then can be used also in other ones. So all this flow, all this exchange, again, getting talent, um, training talent, everything is, all that is very important. You mentioned AI. Of course, that, that is getting more and more important in the live ops part. Uh, so, definitely a lot of uh, possibilities to interconnect uh, those ecosystems and for us to as well embrace new technologies. So maybe Yolanda, what's your perspective? How do you see you know, all the talent coming from other industries joining Gameloft in this case? Um, I think this is always uh, something that enrich uh, the industry. Um, I experienced uh, very uh, often in our company how people switch uh, industries from gaming to to other industries and then they come back so it's really important for us to gather very different profiles with very different backgrounds in terms of experience and knowledge because this is basically enriching our projects and our vision about uh, the current st status of the ecosystem and and the future of the industry Thanks, Yolanda. Uh, Oriol, you have gone through a, a personal transition as well, moving from one, one industry to another one. And uh, I think it's important to know that in the gaming industry, we are creating new jobs, we are creating new careers. We are a kind of truly really top technology um, industry that uh, is providing these kind of new jobs that are not defined yet. So how do you, how do you experience that? And how would you recommend you know, thinking about the broader ecosystem to bring talent into the companies? Yeah, I think you're fully right. Uh, first off, I think this industry is always evolving. And, you know, we are creating jobs and both in more specialized jobs, but also new jobs that you know, did not exist in the past. That's why, first off, you know, when it comes to talent, a, there's a mix of you know, um, hard skills and knowledge, but also you know, the capacity to adapt and to learn and to, and to integrate new, new um, type of, of content. That's why when, in, in, our, in our selection process, we really look at you know, the individual too. That's why 
I mean, it, it is important that comes with a, some certain, certain background, but the, the potential of uh, you know, growing and evolving for me is fundamental. That's why, for example, companies, having a rich ecosystem is important because, you know, it's startups, you know, start with lower budgets, you know, they, they have different objectives. Bigger companies can provide uh, bigger budgets and, you know, maybe, maybe more, even more ambitious projects that also push the boundaries in certain uh, uh, aspects, be it technology, be it any other field, that, that train people that become, right, more experts in those fields that, you know, that after can, you know, can, can evangelize, you can teach new people. So, that's why it's so important that all the parts of the ecosystems are there because really one you know, retrofits the other. And then in, in this case, big companies like, like ours will really push the boundaries you know, in many fields that, uh, that uh, all these people at the end gonna either go to another company or set up their own company and you know, gonna, gonna enrich into the whole system. But yeah, individual is at the end the, the important part because this industry is never static. Thanks, Uriol. Maybe thinking on what's next. I think that we discussed you know, about how we see the ecosystem now, which are the opportunities that we can provide here for companies to establish or to you know, become an opportunity for international companies as well to come here. But uh, where we can do better, Gina? Where are the opportunities that we can actually develop better the ecosystem with the support from organizations like Debicard or with local governments? How do you see that happening? Nobody has a vision on the future, so nobody knows. But if we work together, as we are doing, for example, with Devicat, Dev, Aevi, and the different gaming organizations that we have in our country, um, it's a good way to um, share an experience because my problems are also their problems um, on the other way around. So it would be easier for everybody of us to overcome these problems and um, to to challenge all the future waves that are coming um, because uh, maybe my uh, employees tomorrow are going to be in their companies and the other way around, but also because the students and the kids that are not yet on, on, on school or university are, are, are becoming the, ne the next professionals, not only in Catalonia, but also worldwide because the challenge, the main challenge is this new telework system that now from Barcelona you can work for any other company in the world, but any other professional in the world can work for a Barcelona company as well. Thanks, Gina. Maybe Xavi, what's your view here? Yeah, I would say we have a strong ecosystem right now, but I wouldn't take that for granted. I mean, an ecosystem is, as, as we were discussing before, it's evolving. So it's something we need to take care of. It's something we need to nurture. It's something we need to always um, be aware of the new challenge. So I think the um, challenge here is to have a sustainable growth for the ecosystem. We have all type of companies. We have indie companies, medium companies, multinational companies. So we need to make sure that there is the right balance for all those companies. And again, that we can grow the ecosystem in a sustainable way. And, and I think that's a day-to-day -day job. And we have discussions and we have meetings uh, very often uh, to uh, monitor and see, OK, what, what is missing, what we should be doing. So, so that's the thing. So I think uh, it's, it's right now one of the you know, leading places in Europe, we, we aim to become one of the leading places in the world. And, and if, if, you, you know, if we work together, I think we, we, we're in, in a very good track. But again, the, the first thing is, is, is don't assume that it's going to be there forever and it needs to be worked every day and, 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 and we can have a lot of success. So maybe, Yolanda, from your perspective, uh, is there any opportunity for us to do better in some of these areas we covered? We covered talent, we covered you know, the actual city, we covered you know, ecosystem, game industry, events. How do you see it? Of course, uh, I think that uh, improvement never stops. It's not something related only to gaming industry. It's basically one of the motors of the, of the technology industry. But um, I think that... Uh, we are uh, already unifying efforts in terms of, for example, trying to get more gender balance in our industry because, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a lot to do in, in that sense. Uh, it's really difficult uh, in our companies to find women profiles to, to join. 
uh, our uh, numbers more or less are 20% women, 80% men, so there's a lot to do. And, and we, are, we, we all agree in, in that, so we are going to, um, to put a lot of uh, actions in motion to basically um, attack this topic and, and try to, to improve in the future. Thanks, Yolanda. I think this is a, a topic that is quite close to everyone here. I think we want to bring more you know, women into games. And, and definitely, I think that, as, as we discussed before, this uh, industry that is around having multidisciplinary teams with diverse perspectives, international teams, and definitely you know, missing female talent is creating lower opportunity for us as an industry. Um, in your case, Oriol, what do you think we can do better? Yeah, so uh, as uh, Xavi mentioned, this is, this is building up organically an ecosystem, but you know you cannot give it for granted, so you have to, have to be really uh, alert. I do think we are in the right trajectory, meaning I think all the parts involved have the right attitude and the willingness to do more and collaborate. Then when it comes to coordination and collaboration, the more that there's visibility, that you know, then big companies can work with small companies. We need for big publishers for startups and, and in these studios. How much you know? It's it's easy both to get to the funding and you know and get their, their company that you know launches and projects their games. Definitely, you can do more here. We need even more and stronger local companies that you know that also absorb people and talent from everywhere. So I think all the parts are in the right trajectory. I think time plays at our favor because you know all these new waves of talent that come from the, the universities that are really strong will gain experience and you know, they also set up companies and, and join new companies. But uh, the connecting the dots and, and coordinating even more all the efforts, definitely it's, it's always room right, for, for improvement. So I would say more of this, I mean, cross collaboration and uh, leveraging the whole uh, ecosystem. Thanks so much, Uriel. I think we have time for one or two questions from the audience. So if anyone has a question uh, for the panel, glad to take it. Not sure if we have a microphone here. So maybe you can. You can shout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe you can stand up here and. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. Please tell your name and what are you doing as well. Thank you. Hi. If I know, I, I don't ask. <laughs> Uh, I'm Carlos Solana from Media Pro. Uh, I'm really interested in the way you interact with the ecosystem through open innovation. What kind of structures are you using, for example, to integrate startups in your process of creating, improving, developing new technologies, video games, etc.? Thank you. Thanks so much. Maybe, Xavi, you can take this one? Yeah, I, I, I mean, one thing that this industry has is it's all innovation. So we never know when we start a game, we don't know what hardware is going to be delivered, what is the business model. And so I would say all our companies here are permanently um, open to innovation, permanently integrating and scouting things. So we mentioned a few uh, AI. But I would say we've been pioneering monetization. So whatever is done in the industry is never done. So, oh, we sell games for free. How do you monetize that? So, um, so I think it's, a, it's, it's part of our DNA. It's part of our need. Uh, and so from the you know, hardware, uh, we've been working with, I think we work with all the chain of value of, 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 of the, the, in our case, mobile hardware companies uh, and, and on, on, you know, always like two or three years ahead of what's going to be coming there because, because we, as, as, as um, Yolanda was saying, we had a lot of team doing amazing projects and a lot of very good technology here. So if you want to uh, uh, make a mark internationally on the tech, you need to be uh, in contact with all of that. So uh, I think I would say it's part of a DNA. We're always, always integrating all those. Thanks, Xavi. Thanks, everyone. I think with this, uh, we end up our panel today. So please stay around. A lot of conversations happening here. And thanks, everyone, for coming. Please, a uh, round of applause for this awesome panel. And see you later. Thank you, Thank you so much to the panelists. Uh, just to inform you that uh, we're going to take like a 
five minutes to change the mics for the next uh, panel. So stay, stay seated if you want. Uh, and we're going to start with the second panel soon. Thanks.
Go to your head, no. Don't let it go to your head, no, no, no. no. Hello, hello, we're back, uh, so please take your seats. Thank you, Oscar, it's all yours. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for being here. I think that we can start with this second panel today with this awesome uh, attendees that you are here and our people from the video game industry on both sides. We have Marie Therese Cordon from Ubisoft. We have Eduard Lopez Plans from uh, IO Interactive, Tony Cabello from Bleedworks Larian, and Saul Gascon from CI Games. And I'm going, to, uh, well, I'm Oscar Garcia Pañella from the new Interactive Technology School of the University of Barcelona, which is empty, where we deploy, you know, different uh, video game related degrees. So I, I, I should start by asking each of them, you know, a little bit of a sentence, like 30 second sentence explaining a bit of what they do. So we can start with Marie Therese. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. So yes, I'm uh, Marie Therese Cordon and I am the Human Resources uh, Director at uh, Ubisoft Barcelona, a studio um, that uh, we, we are now 170 people uh, here in Barcelona. So uh, production uh, studio from uh, Ubisoft Group. Thank you, Marie Therese. Time from Saul. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Saul Gascon from Hexworks, a CI game studio. 
Uh, we are working on Lords of the Fallen 2, a AAA game uh, Souls-like uh, for PC and uh, next-gen consoles. Uh, we are established in Barcelona. We are uh, 56 people right now uh, of seniors and uh, well, we want to create very cool games. Thank you, Saul. What about you, Eduard? Good morning. Hello, everyone. I'm Eduard Lopez. I'm the studio head of uh, IOI Barcelona, the newly opened studio from IOI. Uh, 20 years of history making AAA games. And Barcelona is an important part of our plan to become the most desired studio in 2024. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And last but not least, Tony Cabello. Thank you. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Tony Cabello. Uh, I'm founder of Bleedworks, uh, a game porting studio very well known for porting indie games. And we also develop Splunky 2 um, in coordination with, with Derek. And lately, we have been uh, recently acquired by Larian, which uh, wanted to, to build a studio here in, in Barcelona. And, uh, and we are like the, the building stone of, of that studio. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. So let's go straight for the questions. I have a very first question that I'm going to direct to Marie Therese, which is, uh, which ones do you think that are the implications of having a city for, let's say, two markets, which are like casual, mobile, uh, versus, you know, AAA console related games? Which ones are the implications of having like both, let's say, hubs? in the same space, in the same city? OK, good. Well, I think that uh, video games uh, are in uh, all these platforms. So at the end, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, both uh, industries or both um, um, type of, uh, of games will um, you know, uh, like, uh, add to one another. Uh, we at Ubisoft were pioneers in uh, installing ourselves in, in Barcelona 24 years ago, and we were doing uh, AAA already. Um, and uh, we, uh, in our studio, in the studio in the one I work, we, we've been doing AAA since uh, that moment. At Ubisoft, we also do uh, mobile gaming. And uh, around, uh, uh, yes, uh, it's true that the ecosystem grew in Barcelona thanks to mobile. So, in fact, um, it's a, you know a retro alimentation. Um, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, growing the ecosystem. In whatever grows the ecosystem, whatever grows the industry, is interesting because uh, this is a booming industry. This is an interesting industry. Um, we, um, we believe uh, in the power of games, so uh, it's, it's really um, complementing uh, itself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for your words. Uh, Tony, uh, th there are companies, indie companies, that have been successful. Some of these companies have been acquired by much bigger companies, which might be your case, right? Uh, in this new context of AAA and, and console, uh, which one do you think that is the role of indie companies in the same place, in the same hub, where all those you know, big companies like Ubisoft or, or Larian, in your case, uh, are interested in you know, growing this sort of AAA uh, games. Yeah, well, in, in, in our case, the, the acquisition has been, of course, because of the talent. We, we built a team, and, uh, a very tight team, a very technical team. And it was very interesting to start with, with a, a group of people that is already working. So I think uh, every, every, every company has its, its uh, its place in this big com in, in this big industry. Being indie, it doesn't mean it, 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 you, you are not you are not useful. I mean, you are contributing to the whole eco ecosystem. And uh, and yeah, and, and Delhi, as as it was, as it has been explained in the in the panel before, it's everything about talent. Uh, games are made by talented people, and uh, as as soon as you are 
in, 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 in good hands, in, 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 good, in a good team, you have a, a, a place in, in this industry. No, ma no matter if you are very small or, or whatever, it's, it's important to have in the, in the companies uh, growing up and contributing in, in, in every way. Mm -hmm. Many thanks, Tony. Uh, now, now I flip the question a little bit, and I imagine that uh, we position ourselves as a big company, the video game company, AAA. Uh, which one do you think, which is sort of your case? Because you come from another sized company, but now you are IO Interactive. Uh, which one do you think that should be the positioning of the new companies that are landing in the city? Well, I think that the most important role of these companies is to provide uh, these awesome projects for, for people to, to come work on AAA, to help uh, build this talent, uh, to help some people make the transition from mobile games into AAA as well, uh, to share the know-how we have, mm -hmm. uh, to grow the industry, to become stronger, uh, in, in, in all senses, right? So I think we, we are in a very good position for this. Uh, Barcelona has a lot of potential, has a lot of people, has a lot of students. We need more of this, and we need to help them become even better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and again, last but not least, Saul. Um, do we need the same talent in order to build different kinds of games? Because, you know, building games that are for the casual mobile market uh, might be one thing. Building a AAA PC console game might be another thing or not. Do we need the same talent? Actually, this is a very good question because uh, there is a lot of synergies. There is a lot of uh, profiles that can easily migrate between a AAA or a mobile game, especially depending on the type of mobile games you have from like uh, 2D mobile games to more complex 3D mobile games, right? Um, so it depends a lot on the different profiles, but the synergies exist. Like the, there is a, a lot of uh, profiles that, that if they have the interest, if they have the will and they have the talent, uh, they can traverse between uh, these two industries uh, without a problem, right? But uh, it is true though that, uh, that there are some profiles that are very specific to AAA, especially when you're talking about uh, complex gameplay mechanics or complex rendering techniques that uh, squeeze, let's say, the new hardware. And then for that, um, there is, uh, well, different solutions, right? Uh, we, uh, <laughs> let's say we import a lot of talent from outside. Uh, people like the weather here, people like the, uh, you know, how life is in Barcelona, the level of life, and it's like a holiday time the full year, if you, if you know what I mean. So uh, that makes it easy to import talent and then also re-import talent. So a lot of people that did not have these AAA projects, people that is um, monofocused on they want to work on this type of games, right? And then they go outside and then uh, like us, we can, hey, come here, work with us, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, as, uh, as our colleagues said, uh, projects are very, very important and talent can be great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Saul. I'd like to extend this question to the to the rest of the speakers. So what do you guys think about that? What do, you, what do you think about talent, scarcity of talent? Sometimes it's complicated to find the people that you want. It's uh, complicated already in this context. So what's going to happen in the future if you have like the two-headed hub? What do you think about that? May I say something? <laughs> so I think that we're going to see some flow from people uh, migrating from mobile into AAA. Uh, but I think we need a lot more talent. And I think that the most important thing like, is with this great opportunity we have with software, like in the whole world, right? We, we see the gaming industry growing every year. I think last year, AAA uh, business grew 21%, like, it was like $51 billion, I think. Uh, it's a great opportunity, not only in games, but also software apps. Every company needs a new app. Everyone needs a new presence in the media. Uh, it's a great opportunity to grow technology, to grow software as the revolution we're seeing. Uh, and I think that we need a lot more talent from school, right? We need kids to be interested in working in software and working in video games. They need to know that they have a great future 
working as programmers, artists, designers, producers in video games. It's possible, it's great, and they can get awesome jobs uh, when they grow up. So we need way more talent uh, to be able to, to take all the advantage of this time. And we're going to start with, uh, with the talent that is available, which is already plenty. And we have already a lot of uh, know-how that we will also be, be maximizing. Mm -hmm. Tony, Teres. I agree. So okay. I agree with uh, so. Eduard. Uh, we really have a high level of education in, the, in Barcelona. And that's why already 24 years ago, we decided to come here. Uh, and we, it's proven to be uh, uh, good to, to be here. Um, lately, also, with all the degrees that are uh, speci specializing um, uh, in uh, game development uh, disciplines, uh, we are really having, uh, at Ubisoft, we, we really recruit here, we re recruit locally. Of course, not only, and uh, we also find talent uh, abroad that, uh, as we, you were saying, Saul, they like to come to Barcelona because of the quality of life, but not only. It's also because uh, they find uh, at Ubisoft uh, and in my competitors also uh, products of uh, games of uh, high quality, uh, brands that are uh, sold uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, we are uh, now participating in, um, uh, in Ubisoft Barcelona in the Assassin's Creed uh, franchise. Recently, we were working in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um, we are now um, working also in Rainbow Six Siege, in Beyond Good and Evil, in Tom Clancy's The Division. So to, to, to mention uh, some of the projects, some of the blockbusters that, uh, where people, where talent can, can work and uh, they can experience how it is to work in, in these uh, AAA uh, productions that are um, where we also collaborate with other studios uh, in the world, other Ubisoft st studios in the world, and where um, the talent can also share with talents around the world and learn from them, and the others will learn also from, from us. So um, there is talent, but of course, if we want to improve, there is always room uh, for improvement, and the more companies uh, will be in, in Barcelona, the more AAA uh, companies will be in Barcelona, the more we will need um, universities and schools to bring us more talent, more specialized talent also, as you were saying, Saul, because in AAA, uh, really, you need uh, to, 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 to provide um, uh, a lot of detail, uh, you, uh, uh, there are professions that are created uh, every every day, so there is a lot to do also, and this is uh, and this is a good news. Uh, there are challenges there that uh, we are happy to take, and uh, we are happy to take passionate people in our companies that will um, learn with us because our industry is always evolving. It's not everything is not written at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marie Teres. Okay. <clears throat> so we have been, like, uh, the, this last past, past uh, 10 years, we have been uh, in the same city as a growing mobile business, and we were, like, the, the almost the only one uh, people uh, working in consoles. So we have been, like, in, in minority <laughs> for the, the whole time and seeing, like, uh, well, the, the other industry really, really booming. But it has been uh, good for us in, in the way that it's not, it's not a separate uh, thing for us. Uh, game development is, is, we think this is a whole thing. It doesn't matter if, if it's mobile, if it's console, if it's AAA. Uh, the, the values are mostly the same. If you are passionate of, about games, you are mostly likely to be passionate about any of those. And, and in your career, it's, it's very likely that you want to move from one to the other. So in general, we see the, that uh, it, it's, it's good. It's good to have these, these different uh, industries going in the, in the, at the same time, in the same place. It, it, it goes along very well from our point of view. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tony. <clears throat> let, let me let's say, evolve uh, the question a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to take this 
uh, there's a lot to do that Marie Therese was, was mentioning. And let me illustrate this. If I go to high school to talk to the students there about the possibility to study video games, and this is reality, when I reach the class in order to promote the possibility to study video games, uh, what I normally find is zero women, some males, and 98% of these males come from the technological track, which means that I'm missing all the people that comes from the artistical track, which is also important. And if I start talking about the need to learn physics, algebra, math, and C++, to be clear, then uh, there's people that rounds outside the class. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we have. Could you give us some insightful opinions on what can we do with our young people in order for them to be ready to get inside your companies in six, seven years' time? Can I say something? Yes. Uh, I think that we have many advantages uh, in video games. Uh, one of them is that we need a lot of different profiles, right? It's, it's wonderful to be able to work between programmers, artists, animators, designers, producers. These people can come from very different backgrounds uh, and talent and way of seeing life, right? This is great. This means that not, we don't only need programmers. I mean, programmers are great. <laughs> we love them. We always need programmers, but we also need artists. We also need uh, people that have different interests in writing, in acting, uh, in animating, in creating worlds and stories. Uh, and I think that what we should be doing is to show these kids how is our life as developers, how much fun do we have at work, right? What are the cool things we do? What are the challenges we face? How, how good of uh, companionship we have at work and how we help each other to overcome these challenges and to present something that other players will love. And I think that the first step is for them to enjoy games, to make, from our side, really awesome games that these kids will love. Also, we need to make games that girls will love. So these girls, they, they see something they like, and they can also work, and they want to work uh, with us in making these games, in making these universes. And I think that we just need to show them the truth, and we need to make it more popular, and we need to talk to the kids to show them the bright future and the great opportunities they have today and that we have tomorrow in video games, in software, in media, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. Be before, jump before jumping into someone else, let me add something. Uh, when, you, when you call a school and you say, I'm going to come here to talk about video games, one of the issues that we have is that 90% of the schools understand that video games are about technology only. So the problem is much bigger. So when you reach the school, the students that are ready to listen to you that have been sort of selected by the school are the ones connected to technology because the problem is much bigger. Society thinks that video games are about technology only, not narrative, not art, not a lot of, you know, other things, right? And because they think that it's about technology only and the people in Europe is basically scared about technology and engineering, they are not interested in studying that, we have this issue, okay? So it can be approached from different sides. Yeah. Who else? Actually, uh, actually, it's funny you say this because the, uh, my way into the industry was also, uh, I, I didn't know where to start, right? So I was like, hey, what can I do? You know, uh, I wanna do games, that's, that's what I know, right? But I don't know, I didn't know back then that there was design, art, technology, right? So what did they do? I went to, uh, to study programming, right? Because that's what everybody was telling me, right? So I agree with you guys that there is a need of explaining better um, what are the different opportunities in the game industry. I, I have been lucky enough to be um, in uh, Sweden for four years, working there in a, in a big company. We hired a lot of, actually, a lot of juniors. Um, and they have really good schools there, right? And the way that they, uh, that they operate those schools is from a very pragmatical way, uh, with a lot of synergies with the actual um, companies. So what does that mean? Is that all the lectures that they give, all the different classes, all the different 
uh, let's say, specialities that they offer, I agreed with the, the gaming companies. Because again, uh, the game industry is constantly evolving, constantly, right? So then the different tracks that they build are, are built together with the big studios there, right? And this is really good because then uh, generates a good synergy. Ourselves, we were uh, part of that program. Uh, we were helping uh, those uh, mainly two, two big uh, universities there. And uh, we were actually on uh, every three months, we were going there, seeing the students, seeing what they were doing, orienting them, etc. And this really allowed us to, to build a team of uh, more than 100 people, 120 at the end we were, uh, in one year. Right? And uh, majority juniors, also some seniors and some mm -hmm. people from the company, but that really helped a lot. So I think that if we focus, like yes, drying the hair like a ninja in blue, probably that's not the, <laughs> making a school like that's not gonna work. We need to actually work with the universities closer to help them build what is relevant for us, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, hopefully, uh, then kids understand like, aha, uh -huh, okay, these are the different paths that I can take, right? So as very well Edward said, it's not just code. You have code, you have art, you have design, you have production, uh, you, and you have a lot of other things, a lot of other specialities, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Saul. <clears throat> the fact is that when you go to the university, you go to the people that is already a believer, and they are clear about doing video games. But what about the people prior to university, which should be the people to decide to go to the video game industry? Uh, there we have the big issue. In the schools and in high school, because there's a huge bias about what they think that video games are and what their professors think that video games are mm. and what society in general thinks, you know, parents, etc., that video games are. Mm. So I guess that we need to do something prior to university, although this is great what you were saying, mm. that you can sort of connect all your knowledge with university and provide all these juniors the, the opportunity, right? Tony. Yeah. I have a small story that, that connects exactly with what you are trying to say before, before uh, school and university. I have a daughter, with, uh, his, she's uh, six, six years old, and I used to play with, with her some, some, some games on the, on the couch, on the console. And uh, at some point, uh, she started to ask me, hey, I want to play as a, as a girl with, with this game. And, whoa, that's not possible. This game only has a guy. Uh, no, no, but I want to play as a girl. I am a girl. And, and then I started a, a path of finding games that can be played as, as a girl. And I, I, and I was shocked to, to, to um, when, when very little games came out of, of that search. And it was completely coincidental, not, not related, but at the same time when we decided uh, that Splunky 2 will have a, 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 a female hero, Anna. Um, it was not related, it was a coincidence, but it was a very good move because then it, it was actually uh, more, more games started to do that. And, and it made me think, okay, we have been a male industry uh, for a lot of years. We have been sensible with that problem, and, and, and it's there, and it's there, and you can see it with a six-year. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so, so it's it's a, a real problem. We we have to address it over time. It will take a lot of time, and, and make more inclusive game from from that point of view. That that will grow that passion in in. in in people from those ages, because if they disconnect, if they don't feel included in, in that, in that uh, space, well, of course, when they go to high school, when they go to the university, they are going to feel, well, this is not something that I, believe, I, I can belong to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I'm gonna did. jump to Marie-Thérèse. Yes. But just saying one thing, because you are the girl here, so. <laughs> <laughs> but that the, the, the thing is, uh, we have this issue about women, let's say, interested in science, engineering, technology in general, not only in video games. Uh, but we also have the issue about general population a little bit afraid of technology and engineering. And then 
when it comes to video games, sometimes they decide to study art because it looks like doing video games, but easier. Mm. And you need to know that because this is how their mindset works when they are in the first year of the university. Okay? But I jump to you. Well, I was just going to say that, um, well, at Ubisoft, for example, we have some initiatives to, uh, um, well, yes, to go to schools, uh, to inspire girls, show them that uh, women, of course, uh, can be uh, in technology and in anything. It's not a question of genre, it's maybe a question of tradition or because at the beginning it was a male industry, but this happened in other professions. So I think we are uh, in a good moment uh, where this is uh, happening uh, at, uh, in the studio. Uh, we already have uh, many, many women that are uh, uh, programmers, for example, and, uh, and we want to continue uh, doing this. And it's important, um, and for us, it's very important in, the, in, our, in our company culture to be, to be very diverse uh, and um, to be very inclusive because we need to be um, a reflect of what society is at the end, because this is how we will provide content that interests also girls, for example, as you were saying, t uh, Tony. If there are girls in the company, probably they will inspire for more uh, contents that interest uh, women. And it's important also that we are in the workplace because um, it's, um, well, let's say this is even a business challenge. It's uh, proven that companies where uh, there are women are 60% more creative, open. Um, so it's really I'm encouraging companies to, to, to make an effort uh, to find women because there are. It's maybe sometimes more difficult. For example, uh, my talent acquisition team is putting a lot of attention and effort in being um, you know, um, looking at uh, CVs, uh, a lot of, of, of female CVs, trying also to write, um, you know, the, 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 the ads in a way that it talks to women also, because sometimes um, being a male industry, well, we have some biases, no? And uh, the, the, it seems that um, without being super transparent, but um, it, it uh, talks, uh, the, the, the ads talk more to men than to women. So we need to put a lot of attention in that and we need to uh, put a lot of care in this kind of, uh, of things. But we really um, think this is the future. This is the future and um, today uh, at Ubisoft we have around 20 positions open and I really encourage women to, to apply because uh, Girls, we need you in our industry. We really need you in our industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marie Therese. <clears throat> I would encourage anyone that is devoted to video games here and they have kids in a school to give a talk in the school and explain what video games are. So if you work in the video game industry and again, you have kids in a school, why don't you talk to your school and you offer yourself to go one day and to explain what video games are? to all the professors and to, you know, the kids studying there, because I think that it's very important. We try to do it a little bit, but we cannot go to everywhere, you know, from universities, like spreading the word. So I would definitely encourage you to do that, because if we do one talk each, I think that we will start, you know, sort of uh, giving the pedagogy that it's needed in every place, not only because of the need of, of more women, but also talking about what the sector means and all the profiles uh, that need help. I'm going to change the question. Let's go to another one. Um, do you guys think that we need more incubators, more accelerating processes uh, for the new companies that should be connected to this AAA console PC market? We have like Game BCN, we have like Level Up. Do we need more structures like that? What do you think? Who wants to talk? <laughs> hey? so I can go. Yes. <laughs> A short answer, yes. Like at the end, uh, like for instance, right now, just to give an example, there is a company in Girona that they are working on a, 
character customizer uh, for you in Unreal Engine, right? And uh, you know, uh, they uh, build this and it's used now by different companies. And um, they are, let's say, uh, one of the only ones in the world that actually do this, that do this right? As a, an API that you can acquire. So uh, all these type of initiatives, and this is just one example, Okay, uh, it's very close because we're using it. <laughs> That's why I, I give that example. But there's a lot of other examples of other technologies uh, for geolocalization, to use uh, Google Maps data to actually create levels uh, in Unreal Engine. Like, there is a lot of, uh, of these technologies. So all these type of incubators that uh, passionate people that wants to push the industry forward with technologies that us necessarily don't develop because we are you know, do, doing our games, right? Uh, but if these incubators come with new ideas and make it available for us, then we will integrate it into, uh, into our games, right? Like, great example uh, of this uh, in mobile happens a lot, right? Like, uh, for instance, Pokemon Go, the super famous uh, mobile game, right? Came from this idea of, like, okay, you have a geolocalization and then you have gameplay elements or gameplay events along your real world data, right? Uh, of maps. So uh, that started as a one technology and then was used by games for this, right? So um, this is the kind of uh, incubators. They are really the, uh, uh, let's say, they can trigger things that we cannot even think about right now. This is why, uh, well, personally, I'm very excited about, about incubators. Mm -hmm. Who else? Well, you raised a very good point mm -hmm. about uh, the need of other companies that surround the studios and provide with services mm -hmm. as providers. And these companies also exist in the, in the sector, right? Which are more opportunities. I, you want it? Well, I just wanted to say that any uh, initiative that uh, grows the talent pool in Barcelona um, is going to be positive for all of us. And um, well, any initiative, yes, where people, uh, you know, uh, go to uh, the limits of uh, technology, uh, tries uh, to go over boundaries, are passionate by video games and uh, increase their, uh, their, their, their capacities, their talent, their competencies, anything, like everything around that is, is very good to grow our ecosystem and uh, the bigger our ecosystem is, the stronger it will be and uh, the more AAA games we will be able to produce in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So, of course, any um, initiative like this is absolutely positive. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank Growing you. the talent pool. Thank you, Marie Therese. Uh, last thing. Mm -hmm. uh, could you share an insight with the audience something good, wishful, that you would love to happen within the next five years in this city, and related to you and your industry, mm -hmm. our industry? Maybe. Tell us something, like a wish. No, a wish or a, or a prediction, or just a thought, a food for thought. Uh, I think like AAA like is, is taking off in Barcelona. It's going to grow a lot. It's going to go well. It's going to be super cool for, for everyone. Uh, AAA is what inspired me to make video games. And I think it's what inspires most of game developers to make really cool games, the best games ever. That's what we want to do. We need to think about AAA is going to be played by mobile as well. Right? We talk a lot about mobile and AAA, but now AAA is arriving in mobile. It's already possible with some streaming services, and this is going up. So this means that many more people will be able to play AAA. Many more people will see a future in AAA, and we are going to grow, and we're going to do great. So mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Eduard. My wish? <laughs> yeah, your wish. <laughs> well, um, of course, to see uh, our our industry in Barcelona be even bigger. We are already strong. We are already not bad, but be already, uh, of course, bigger. And, um, and see that uh, we are uh, absolutely inclusive and diverse. We are producing contents that speak to all the audiences. And we are 50% at least of women inside the, this industry. Mm -hmm. A wish. Great wish. Yeah. 
Tony, Saul. Oh. Oh. So my wish is, uh, or prediction, <laughs> right, <laughs> is uh, like a lot of years ago, uh, the, the mobile industry in Barcelona was basically unexistent. There were pioneers there, like Digital Chocolate, like Digital Legends, and other uh, uh, studios that, that, let's say, uh, started working on a mobile to become a world reference, right? So now Barcelona is the hub of mobile worldwide. So my wish, if I, if I could make a wish, would be for Barcelona to become the hub also for AAA, right? So uh, that's, that's my wishful thinking or prediction. We, we will see with our effort and uh, of everybody else, we, we can surely make it. Nice. Yeah. I, I think we have been having like, a, for the latest year, a lot of AAA related news regarding Barcelona. And uh, it has been, Probably a coincidence because well, it has happened out of nowhere. But my prediction is that this is, this is going to be a, 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 an easier sell in the universities, in the high schools, in order to, hey, this is getting even more interesting, not only mobile, now you have even more options. So yeah, let's, let's hope this is going to get more momentum. So in mm -hmm. five years, all these new students can, can join. Very good, very good one. Thank you very much for your wishes. I think that we have time for one or two questions. No? No questions? We are over? We are done? OK. See? Si? Okay. OK. Wait, no. OK, then. Uh, well, thank you very much uh, to Tony, to Eduard, to Saul, to Marie Therese for, for all your insights, knowledge, talent. Uh, thank you very much to the audience here, to the Vika, to Editorial Proa, to Ivan, to Mobile. And, and you know, let's hope that you know, the force is with us in terms of AAA and console market. Uh, for the times to come. So thank you very much, and please stay healthy. And talk about video games in schools. Thank you. <laughs>
Ven por aquí. Welcome back. Uh, please take your seats. We are going to start the last panel of the day. Uh, I was, I was, um, I was going, and I'm going to be the moderator for this panel. I'm going to try to do my best because, uh, as many of you know, uh, I'm a little bit sick. Uh, no COVID, but uh, there are other. <laughs> diseases around, so I'm, I'm going to try to keep my voice and do my best for this panel, but I keep the distance with you guys uh, just to keep you safe, okay? <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us in such a special situation. Um, it's been a tough year, a tough couple of years, and we are happily back together little by little. Uh, mm, not face to face, but mask, mask to mask at least. Um, and I hope it's the beginning of, uh, of better times, of, of the times that we, uh, similar to the ones that we, we used to have. Um, this third panel, I mean, as, as, you, as you saw in the, in the general program, we've been talking a lot about Barcelona, Catalonia, and how the ecosystem is booming here, how the games um, sector is booming in, in the region. Um, but um, I wanted to dedicate this last panel to something that is not exactly video games, or at least not video games creation, even though it might uh, end up being <laughs> video game creation as well, as some of you in the panel knows very well. But I wanted to talk about all the content that is being generated by people, by companies, um, around video games or using video games as an excuse. And um, I feel that uh, this, this other sector, this other uh, content creation sector, um, sometimes is a little bit, I wouldn't say disconnected, but not so much connected to the production sector. And I always like to, to try to, to, to build a little, uh, a little bit some bridges between the content creation and the companies and the creators that allow those content crea creators to uh, do their job. No? So um, before we know a little bit more about the panelists today, um, um, well, I, can, I, I might introduce them like very briefly. Uh, from from uh, right to left, we have Alvaro Gonzalez de Buitrago, that is the uh, the founder of um, the eSports organization Team Queso, very well known, world champions in, uh, in Class Royale, for instance. That's uh, such a, an achievement, congratulations. Um, we have Anouk, uh, Ana Olivera, right? Um, there is um, that, uh, the founder of a Square Box, there is, a, I would say, a school, he, she's, she's going to explain a little bit better, but a school of, uh, uh, for, for talent in this industry. Uh, we have one of the, pion uh, the pioneers of the um, eSports in Europe. Anouk is my favorite. And Anna is way more of a pioneer than me. She's going to split. Well, we'll soon have, we have two pioneers of the eSports because we, everybody uh, talks about eSports uh, today, but there are some people like, uh, like Anna and uh, Sergi that have been working in this sector for many, many years. Uh, and, and both of them are uh, part of those pioneers, is now the uh, head of eSports for the Interactive Software Federation of Europe. Uh, and he's doing uh, um, um, a very in important job for the industry in, from Brussels. Uh, we have Enrique Cavestani, that is um, the, the lead or the head of Western markets for 
a huge company uh, in the mobile publishing and uh, the mobile games publishing space called FanPlus, but also the owners of one of the most uh, relevant and successful esports uh, teams in the world, that is uh, FanPlus Phoenix. And we have uh, my old friend, <laughs> <laughs> old and friend both, uh, Jose Pepe Arcas, that is. Um, one of the um, leading voices in this agency, one of the top talent agencies, uh, I would say, in the world, uh, in this new uh, content uh, creation industry. So such a great panel. But before we get a little bit more uh, in detail of, uh, in your business, I wanted to ask you all, and I want, um, well, you, you decide who, who are going to, ask the que to answer the question, but what factors, social, economic, technological, of, or any other kind, do you think explain better the explosion of video games content creation, of, or, or the creation of content uh, on, on video games? What, what do you think this explosion happens in these last five years? So maybe Sergi, I know Sergi knows a lot about it or have many ideas, so let's start with Sergi. Well, it goes far longer than the, fa the last five years, uh, but of course there's first, can I leave you? Yes. Do you like, leave this? And oh, I, and this I should much be, better for yeah, speaking. Yeah, I should be taking mine too. Okay, uh, we have first a change in the social consideration of vi video games. Uh, from a technological novelty in the 70s to being considered more of a toy during the 80s, a hobby during the 90s. In the 2000s, we, can, we find that video games have become somehow a lifestyle. This does not mean that all your life turns around video games, but that video games affect other areas of your life, such as the music that you listen to, the drinks that you drink, the uh, places that you go on holiday, and even, of course, the cho the choosing your uh, professional career. Um, this social consideration has, uh, is, is related to a huge explosion in the popularity of video games. In general, people that enjoy video games when they were kids, they do not abandon them. They may not play that, that much, but they, they do not abandon them. Uh, and of course, the new generations will come uh, playing with video games. That's more of the social part. But of course, we have also a technological side of it. Um, video games, at, at the end, uh, they are uh, an, a technological endemic um, sector, no? So we have three technologies that have affected uh, the popularity of video games and video game, video game content a lot. One, the first one is the uh, democratization of broadband internet. And then we have uh, video streaming and, on, and live video streaming. Uh, video streaming in during the 2000s and live video streaming in the last decade. Uh, with this uh, democratization of these technologies, what we've seen is a huge amount of uh, content around video games that has f f retro feedback uh, the popularity of video games. So it's been a virtual circle of uh, changes in social consideration and technologies that have allowed the explosion in the content creation. Anything you want to add, maybe Pepe? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Following up the, the topic of um, she, he has said, it's all about uh, how democrat has become the content creation. I mean, when YouTube was born, it allows people like someone called Rubius to start with one viewer, and he became the biggest creator of YouTube. Uh, Twitch, a few years later, became the same model. You, everyone can create content. And from that point, it's not someone that decides what to watch on TV. It's the user that, ha that has plenty of options to choose from. And the growth of YouTube became from video games. The growth of Twitch became from video games. So that's the starting point of this huge explosion. You can create, everyone can create content about video games. And they were used to be aside other topics, music, cinema, whatever. And now the creators, influencers, has video games in the middle. So you share topics about fashion, about music, 
a creator of video games can make a cooking program, can make a boxing event, mm -hmm. and they feel natural for them. So that's the key point of this. Everyone can create content, and they decided to create video game content. Mm -hmm. Enrique wants to add something? I think also it's important to have in consideration that mobile is everywhere. And for distribution, when you create the content, you need to distribute the content. So now, actually, everyone is seeing the content on mobile, more or less. Because you can be everywhere where you want. You can see and streaming from. One thing is product, production of the content. But the other thing is the distribution of that content. If that content is distributed around the mobile devices, you can see it everywhere with no location specifically. So it's, it's, it's amazing how this expansion of the broadband, but also of the devices with capabilities to see live streamings at the same, well, in high speed on whatever, I think it's, it's the best. And one, one key factor of this explosion as well. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, yeah, if you want to add something, just yeah. use it. No. I, I agree with uh, all, all the topics that my, my colleagues cover. I, I would like to add one, one more thing that uh, it's part of the democratization that uh, Sergi mentioned at the very beginning. That uh, for me, I mean, I, I'm founder of the eSport organization, but I am also a YouTuber. And uh, I remember when I started that uh, it was kind of tricky for me to, to find like, the, the right equipment. And uh, I thought at the, at the very beginning that that was an important thing you have to to, to have a, a very good camera, a good microphone, etc. And the point is that uh, the thing is that right now, today, every, everyone has a, a powerful device. I mean, the smartphone is enough to, to record videos. And what I've seen on, on YouTube is that the, the platform and the, the algorithm and the audience uh, usually watch what they want to, to watch, and they don't expect like a a huge quality in the in the content. That, that means that the entry barrier to, to create content is in, inexistent. So I mean, with that, you have like the, the perfect ingredients to have this, uh, this kind of explosion. Uh, a lot of people who want to create content, a lot of people who want to watch and consume that content, and that's uh, the perfect combinations together with the, with the penetration of the new devices, the phones, the mobi mobile gaming. And, uh, and mobile apps to, to watch videos, and for sure the platforms such as YouTube, Twitch, uh, and many others. Inanna, mm -hmm. uh, as one of the pioneers, uh, you, you, you probably have seen, I mean, you were one of the very few at the beginning, right? And now many, many people around the world is doing, is doing content. How did you see this, this evolution? Well, when I started playing, there was not really um, a passion for content, not as much as now. But it's true that we are in the era, in the era of digital entertainment, and that makes a huge difference. And it's been a process, like Sergi said as well, because different things happen on the way, like Justin TV or Twitch now is one of the reasons that everything became suddenly easier and everyone could make content, with, even with a bad camera. That was not even a point. Well, mm -hmm. it, like, you could just go live and start explaining things, and people would decide if they watch you or not. And I think this is going to keep growing. The only reason that it's maybe not on the top of it yet is because we still have not, like not everyone um, has born with or in this situation. Our children already are digital entertainment and that's full time and they just go to, the, to, to any computer or any device and watch things. And for our parents, it's still kind of, you know, this barrier that they don't understand. But as soon as everyone is part of this, industry or part of this, not only video games, because you can share anything, mm -hmm. it, will be, it will become part of our, our life in mm -hmm. different, level, different levels. So. Mm -hmm. And in, in which, I mean, this is definitely, a, as I said before, an explosion, right? The, 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 nobody doubts already about the, the size or the importance of the phenomenon. But uh, in which sectors um, is impacting this phenomenon most? I mean, I'm talking about the three sectors that are more obviously come to my mind are video games, audiovisual, uh, sports, in a way, right? In, in how do you see this phenomenon impacting in, in the different sectors and how? <laughs> Who want to start a fire? I mean, oh. because. Um, Depending uh -huh. on who you talk to, I mean, yeah. they, they compare, they say, well, this is, you know, the, 
This is an audiovisual produ uh, production thing. This is a, we're talking about audiences. We're talking. It about has impacted age. everything. Yeah, <laughs> I, th I think everything. that th there is no winner. I mean, that uh, I, uh, wh whatever you w you want to find on on the internet, uh, you will. So I mean, uh, imagine that uh, you are making a kind of a construction or whatever uh, you you want to get information. I'm quite sure that you will find a video on YouTube explaining all the stuff you are looking for, and uh, and that. I mean, you can cover all the, all the topics because there is, for everything, there is someone on the on the world that uh, that uh, has has thought that the, it's a good idea to share knowledge and share content on on internet. It could be a, a, a video, it could be a, just a vlog with test. But uh, I think that every sector, every industry, has won something with, uh, with this. Specifically talking about uh, content created. Uh, about video games, no? using video games, how this, this, this content creation is affecting uh, the video games industry, or how it's transforming the audiovisual industry, or how it's even impacting in the, well, the sports or the competition. Uh, wise. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. <laughs> I, I just thought about an example. Um, some days ago, there was a, an international team in eSports. They, mm. they made a change, or I don't remember what happened. They changed the lineup of the team. And for instance, in Spain, that was, a, or was criticized because this international team was so good. It's, it's, so, like, it's been there so, for so long. And the way they communicated, it was not good enough. Because in Spain, content creation is already in a very high level. And when we want to communicate something through, let's say in this case, eSports, it has to be in a very professional way. Content creation is part of this whole communication. It's not anymore a, hi, uh, we are changing lineup. Bye. This is not happening. We, we make a video. It's, uh, we explain why. So the, the importance we're giving to the content creation is at a very high level. And at least in Spain, it, that's pretty clear. So we are on that point that we criticize others that has been there for 20 years because they are not doing the right communication with content creation. Mm -hmm. of it, you know. As Alvaro mentioned, I mean, the barrier of entry is so low that, and the amount of count content is so huge that it's very difficult to find a sector that has not been affected. But the ones, of course, that have been most affected are those that depend on the on the attention on the, of uh, so mostly uh, linked to entertainment uh, because uh, now the economy of attention there's so many things uh, uh, happening and so much content available for well for free even that or mostly for free on the internet that all those industries that depend on eyeballs and the attention of people have been the most affected including of course some of, uh, of the ones that you've mentioned uh, sports, uh, possibly audiovisual industry like the cinema, television. Television has been, I mean, heavily disrupted by the patterns of new consumption. Mm -hmm. I think also on, on, on the marketing side as well as the user acquisition side, this is a, a sector that has been growing a lot. On the marketing side, for example, most of our games have uh, been relying a lot on, on the user-generated content because most of them they want to create content that they published in YouTube, whatever uh, you know, platform uh, it works, because they need to show up how the game works. And others are following them in order to understand how they can surpass this level, how they can reach these, this expected hero or whatever. right? So there's a lot of people creating content with not uh, a huge experience on the beginning. right? But then after a lot of people start following them on these networks, then they become, in our case, for example, brand ambassadors of our own games. And they start exposing. They get more professional. They get more uh, interested. And also, they get rewards so many times by companies like us that pay them in order to create content uh, more and more professional. But in the other side, when you go on the, on the user acquisition side, we've been seeing that a lot of uh, influencers that create kind of content uh, can generate better engagement on the campaigns that we generate through them if those kind of content are generated kind of organically, right? So we, uh, 
on the beginning, we used to pay for uh, different kind of shout outs in, in the video of YouTubers or influencers. But right now, what we're trying to look is for different kind of activations that we do with them that generate uh, larger ROI campaigns because it creates something more organic. So on, on both sides, on, on our business, on the gaming side, uh, on the game development side, on the marketing side, and on the user acquisition side, I think it's so relevant, the content creation. And Pepe and his company knows quite a bit about it. Uh, they are <laughs> working with them, of course. <laughs> disrupting, creating sure. new, uh, so it, I, it, could, I could call it TV formats, but it's not even TV anymore, right? It's like a yeah, new content format. format. <laughs> but it, it's really interesting how um, esports um, brought to video games industry um, like this uh, leadership companion, like these values, and now sports, traditional sport, are taken from video game industry to be relevant again for young people, young target. The, um, the consumer of, of traditional sport is getting older. They had to pay for the content. So you can ask, I don't know, a, a 10 years old a kid if they want um, a sign from Messi or Ibai, <laughs> and they may consider who to choose. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting how sports industry are looking at video game industry to bring new users with uh, FIFA competitions, with all kind of contents, with um, football players being streamers, like uh, Borja Iglesias, uh, Kun Agüero, whoever, or people like Piqué is talking to Copa America to bring the rights to broadcast the competition inside Ibai's channel. A uh, caster, e-sport caster, that <coughs> then became a content creator. So it's really interesting how other industries like sports are looking at video game industry to increase and be relevant again for, for young, young people. And, and talking about um, you know, building this, this ecosystem of new companies, of new businesses, um, and talking about talent, what, what is the main talent that uh, this, this new sector uh, is using or is demanding? Is the, is the talent that is already in place and it's just a we need to transform, or is talent that needs to be um, uh, educated uh, for, for the, the growth of the, of the opportunity? You mean inner talent or some no, I mean in a general, talent? No, I mean in general, talking about the, the, all your businesses uh, related to content creation, what is the most, uh, you know, like the essential talent that you used uh, for, for building this, this, uh, sure. this yeah. Phenomenal. To follow up the, the conversation, I think that um, the key right now in the following years would be um, creativity around new formats, new ways to communicate. And for sure, as he has said, the, the talents are the ones that bring audiences, that bring relevance and generate engagement. But there's too many content. There's too many content in too many platforms. So the way we are looking to be a little different is putting the talent in the middle, content creators, esports players, and generate around them like an ecosystem of formats or platforms to develop highly level production content. So now it's the time to generate entertainment for, from esports, as football did. Uh, maybe you all remember that a TV program they did on Mondays called El Dia Después about football. That they did content about competitions, and that's how eSport is evolving. We have worked with Anna um, in a format called Top Gamers Academy with Paco that is already in the audience. We have worked with Alvaro in doing like a global launch campaign of League of Legends Wild Rift. So we are putting talent plus high-level production to be like the next different thing in the wider um, moment ever in content creation. So you are disrupting, in a way, the audiovisual industry, we could say, and that you are using part of those, uh, of, of that talent of those companies that are in the audiovisual space and, and using them to produce this new content. So is that like a new opportunity for the audiovisual yeah. around this kind of content? It's no longer self-made. 
the YouTuber generation were, were the one that they played, they filmed, they edit, they upload, they manage the content, there was community management. It's no longer the way to be relevant in content creation. It's really hard to be success on Twitch or on YouTube or whatever. Less than 100% can live from creating content. So we are really going one step further to, to include them in high level productions, in agreements with other, I don't know, we talk to Twitch itself to generate content, to non-endemic brands, I don't know, Coca-Cola, KitKat, um, beers, we were doing format with all kinds of, of brands, putting always the talent in the middle. So this is really relevant for us, and this is how we really think that it's going to be about um, Esports players are no longer only players, they are also creators. And it's really, really, really different. Uh, Alvaro is like the first case. I met him like seven years ago as a creator and he evolved to Esports team. So, hmm. content, one, uh, sorry, self generated content is no longer the option to live as a content creator. Yeah, we're seeing like a. Um and more and more professionalization no, in the contents. Uh, uh, Sergi also experienced uh, in his previous uh, company that as well, no? uh, from mm -hmm. the very beginning of the Liga de Videojuegos to what it became at the, at the very end. It's, I, I guess it's, it was a journey, right, to professionalization? Well, yes, when we started, it was basically a cupboard where, <laughs> where, some of the, where we were literally like a small cupboard where, where the casters were. Uh, um, commentating on the matches. And uh, now uh, I'm not part of LVP anymore, but they have like two or three uh, TV, TV studios, like uh, TV level studios. Uh, sometimes some of their productions even involve a 1,000 square meter studio, which if you have, if you have explained it when we started, 1,000 uh, square meters was 20 times the size of our office. <laughs> So yes, um, I agree that um, it's very difficult that, or that the, the time where, um, where the Lone Ranger would end up be becoming um, uh, this big star, it's over. It will happen from time to time mm -hmm. because uh, that's the way, but it's not like that generation we had 10 years ago or, yeah, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, 10 to 12 years ago that started. And, and there were a lot of people that uh, reached uh, very high uh, levels of popularity. That's very difficult now. Uh, one thing that probably will also have a lot of relevance, it's um, uh, training and education. That's, yeah. um, for, and, and at all stages, not only the, the talent. Uh, I mean, other we can see this in other industries. I mean, the film industry, in the theater, in there's been there's training for actors, there's training for professionals in production of cinema, and, and this is already this has already started, but it's still a bit small. But it will, in my opinion, it will grow a, bit, uh, a lot in the next uh, years. And so, training and education are going to also to make a difference. I think. Yeah, I was going to point out that and, and saying that uh, that's why projects like a square box uh, make sense at mm -hmm. this point, right? <laughs> I had a good idea with the uh, rings. Um, yeah, actually, um, I think, well, I, I thought about a square box in many cases now when we've, we've, we've been talking also because for us, teaching is also through content creation. So we try to have talent that explain what they did all, all these years, and how they, they made it happen, which, uh, as, as Sergi said as well, now it's, it's more difficult because you have a lot of content, way too much content, and to be relevant is very difficult. Also, if you ask the, the content creators, they tell you that they don't even know how, how they made it, some of them. Like, yeah, they, I've been working hard, I've been doing a lot of things, but I don't really know what, what was the key. And the fact that now there are companies like, like Biz Agency that knows or has this vision of, OK, I have the talent. I'm going to put them in the middle of something that happens around them and try different formats. And uh, that's part of the, the right now and what it has to happen. And we don't have to forget that it, when we talk about education, which I think it's one of the key 
otherwise I wouldn't have started Squarebox. Mm -hmm. It's not only about the talent. We don't only teach how to be a talent. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's a whole ecosystem, a, a whole amount of people that needs to work in, in, in this scenario, and that we need them to be professional. If we have more professional people, the industry will grow in a better way, in a healthier way, and faster as well. So that's why I think it's pretty important. Mm -hmm. And do you get, uh, do you get like, uh, people already, already professionals coming from from maybe the audiovisual sector that, that comes to the school to learn how to adapt to this new era? Actually, I think it's been two days ago that we released a new title, which is Audiovisuals in Esports and Gaming. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not the, you, you can tell me, yeah, I can learn audiovisuals in a, in a lot of places, mm -hmm. but we try to put this vision from, I want to work on an event like this, I want to work on, a, on an esports club with, where I have to do a lot of content, I want to work for myself where I have to do a lot of content, for a brand that maybe now you can find on, on, on different offers, like, I don't know, um, Shell yesterday, there was an offer, they, they were looking for content creators, mm -hmm. Shell, like, it's totally blowing my mind, but mm -hmm. everyone is looking for head of esports, head of content, they need people that knows what to do, how to do, how to explain, so I think that now it's the moment to mm -hmm. make this stronger and better. You just mentioned esports uh, organizations, like uh, Team Queso or Fun Plus uh, Phoenix, uh, how important is for these organizations uh, in, in their business, in their strategy, content creations versus other things that we easily associate with uh, esports competitions, etc.? Uh, for, for us, at least, I, I, and I think that for every esports organization, I mean, content is, uh, is everything. I mean, at the, at the very end, we are, we are esports teams, so we, we compete in different video games, but. Uh, Ultimately, we are entertainment companies, and we create entertainment through competition in video games and through the content we create around those competitions. So, I mean, for us, it's, uh, it's the product. I mean, the, the, uh, if, we, if we think uh, think as a company that produces something or a, a product or service, the content, the digital content we produce is the, our final product. And that's the, the stuff that uh, we provide to our fans, to our audience, and we monetize <coughs> that audience through our sponsorships or different ways. But ultimately, I think that uh, to sum up, I mean, the, the content is that, like the, our final product. So super important. <laughs> In our case, um, content is the king, definitely. Our players are all day uh, streaming their own lives. You know, our big team is based in China, and you cannot imagine how <laughs> China is with the streaming of their own lives. Uh, if we think that we have content here, China is <laughs> far away for, from where we are. But in that in that sense, it it makes total uh, total total sense following up with what the content gives us after, right? So. And we have sponsors that use our players in order to make some stuff, content specifically for their own brands. But also, it's kind of interesting that a brand like us can produce its own brand to sell its own products apart from what is the main product that is the, the way that they play, right? So we're starting build merchandising, right, across this multi-platform content that we are generating with our players. So this is another business that goes a little bit on the older sports industry mm -hmm. when they start selling merchandising and, and so on. So on our side, we became big. We started getting sponsors. And right now, our players are starting to sell or be our brand ambassadors of our own merchandising that we start selling. So it's kind of. And uh, um, connecting with that, how important um, in, in, in is um, uh, the intellectual property issue, right? Or, or, or <laughs> Sergio, is the that question <laughs> felt like thrown at me. That's for you. That's for you. I know, as, I know you have it. As I guess, as the official representative yeah. of the publishing side of the video game industry, it really <laughs> felt like a, you, you are the one. <laughs> like a, like an attack. It's not an attack, of course, but um, yeah, with video game content, with most of video game content, not all of it, uh, but you have to have in mind that you are using um, the intellectual property of a third person, which is a, a, a video game company. And uh, video games are complex works, 
they are not only a software. They, are, they also have inside um, a lot of, pro a lot of uh, parts, a lot of um, that are protected by copyright and other intellectual property rights, neighboring rights, etc. Uh, from the music, the, the acting, the, of course, the writing, the, the, the concept art, everything, <laughs> the designs, uh, the, some patents sometimes, sometimes, sometimes uh, that are protected by intellectual property rights. And, uh, and the most of content creator, uh, create, uh, creation on video games and esports is supported by these intellectual property rights. So of course, um, creators and producers have to, ha have to be aware of what they can and cannot do with the intellectual property of the video game publishers. Uh, there's good news and bad news, uh, because uh, producing a video game is so expensive, and, it, and, and the investment does not finish when you finish the video game and you release it. it video games, most of the times, and in particular the popular ones and the ones that have online multiplayer, uh, they have to be supported for years and years with new content, with um, patches to update it, with community uh, management. This means that they are extremely expensive, and the, and the publishers are very, in general, very protective of their intellectual property rights. And that, that's like the bad news. The good news is that there are a lot of games, and publishers have, among them, different policies, and even for different poli uh, uh, same publishers have different policies uh, with their titles of what you can and you cannot do. And most of the times, it's quite clear. But I would say that. Uh, for anyone interested in content creation in video games, that the first thing that you have to do is learn what you can do what, what, uh, with the games. Mm -hmm. Same question throw to the creator side. How do you think, uh, do you think that the, the publishers, the owners of the ball in this case, are dealing with this uh, in the best possible way? Or uh, To be honest, I think that the, um, I mean, uh, for, for sure, I mean, I have, a, I have a, an opinion and, uh, and I love the companies or game publishers that uh, allows creators to, to, to produce videos, uh, upload them to, to the internet, monetize them uh, via ads. I mean, that's, uh, that's super on the creative side, but I totally understand that uh, at, the, at the end, I mean, the video game is your product, is your intellectual property rights, and, uh, and you decide what you want to do with them. Uh, I remember when I started uh, uploading videos on, on my YouTube channel, uh, first thing I, I did um, was checking on, it was a class of clans, so it was a Supercell game, and uh, first thing I did was checking terms of service and policies of the content to know if I, if I was able to create a video game of, the, of that uh, of Clash of Clans, upload them on YouTube, and monetize the video via, via advertising, via ads. And uh, I found nothing. So I, I had to email the general email, uh, email address on the website. It was legal at uh, supercell.com, something like that. And I, and I sent an email every single day until I got a reply. And it was like, you can consider this email as a written permission to upload videos via ad uh, as long as uh, you not charge the final user to consume that content. And I was okay. That's pretty clear. I start uploading videos on YouTube, and uh, I start re receiving uh, strikes from YouTube <laughs> to to ask me to prove that I had the rights to the commercial rights to, to monetize the content. And I blow the the email, and that was fine. And I had to repeat that process during my first year on on YouTube with every single video until I was like kind of whitelisted or something like that. But uh, yeah, answering the question, I mean. Uh, for sure, I mean, in terms of creativity of the of the the people, the audience, the the users. I mean, it's great to to allow them some flexibility with your with your content, but you also are the o the final owner of the of the property, the intellectual property rights, the IP, and you can control what you want to do with your your IP, what you want the creators do with your IP, and what you you don't want to. So if you want to. If you want creators to produce the content in a in a specific way, let's say um, uh, for all publics with no bad words, no screaming, whatever, you can do it because uh, at the very end is your is your content. You you don't have to to justify anything. So I wanted to add. I've been in, in <laughs> different positions around the IP of, of video game. I've been working at Nintendo for six years, so I know how it is to make the game. <laughs> but I also know when I was working at, at ESL how it is to do competitions with the game 
that constantly you need to have this conversation with the publisher and, and know what you can do, what you cannot do. So it's super important that you have this clear, but also a, and a tip for the people that create content. If you go to the websites of these different companies, they usually have uh, a section where, where they explain what you can do without asking. So there's a limitation or something you can actually do without asking them, like, I don't know, a small tournament in my uh, hometown, and maybe for that they don't even ask you anything if there's no prize pool or things like that. So check it because it's really important. In general, it's a bit easier for content creators than esports tournaments. Yeah, that also, yeah has I to know. Be said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so we're running out of time, but I, I want to throw one last question, um, connecting a little bit the, the main topic of this, of this uh, um, day here at Mobile World Congress, that are video games. Um, how do you see the relation between the content creation industry and the video games industry evolving? How do you, uh, how do you um, see the video games are adapting or will adapt to um, increase their reach through this phenomenon? Well, as a game publisher, I think that um, the natural path will be going uh, platform agnostic. This is one of the, the paths that we want to follow. Um, and also social and content-based. These are the three, the three main things that I think that most of the big gaming companies are going to be following up and trying to, to reach. When you say content-based, you mean that um, maybe in the back yeah. of the minds is so that we are doing games for audiences more than for So players. when I say content-based is we never stop creating content. So games like our, ours that are top tier one on strategy, for example, uh, are based on live ops, so you never can stop updating the content that you are producing for your players. So according to that, you can show up what the producers of the game wants to the audience, but also you need to adapt of what the players want. So you need to produce content according to what they want, and sometimes you need to rely on people like Alvaro, uh, brand ambassadors, people who love that game that start helping building that game and, and, and publishing that game in another way that you as a game developer can have, right? That's the reason why I think that it's, it's something that the content always needs to be related with the production of the game that you are doing. Yep, I think it's, it's all about passion. I mean, uh, people that work, that work in video game industry share the same passion that creators that generate content about video games. I mean, I mean, look at Sergi Sox, please. It's like the <laughs> perfect example how we feel video games in, in, the, in our inner side. So I think that what really keeps expanding or exploding or, or revolving um, video games from content to industry, it's the passion that people really feel when we work in video games. I started 20 years ago, thanks to someone around here that let me start my first article. Then I moved to Nintendo, then I moved to content creators. I've, I've worked with almost all of you, I guess. And we, I always feel that this passion, it's the same passion that you feel in music industry, in sport industry. No matter if you're a creator, you're part of the industry. I'm, I'm not able to generate a single live form of content in my life. <laughs> But I really appreciate the people that make content and by far the ones that make video games. Without them, there's no content to create. Without video games, without publisher, without developers, there's no industry to work around. So I really appreciate and thank everyone for their passion creating video games. You are and always be a video games guy. <laughs> sure. Anything else to close up? Well, just. Um, Thank you again for, for sharing kindly your time with us. Thank you, all of you, for, for coming. Um, want to end up with a wish, that is that many game developers uh, watch this session on video when it's avail available. I think there is a, bringing together both worlds can only bring uh, good things, and I'll try to 
do my best to make it happen here in this amazing ecosystem that is Barcelona, uh, finding the right excuses for more exchange of ideas, more connection, and to see like uh, growth in, in both directions uh, and make uh, Catalonia, Barcelona, and Spain, of course, uh, a great hub for creativity and for entertainment as it is already. Thank you so much and hope to see you soon in another occasion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.